Uh, good evening, friends. Today I am going to discuss about uh, reciprocal basis. Uh, so, first of all, we should know what a basis is. A basis is nothing but a set of n linearly independent vectors uh, that can be used uh, to represent all the vectors in a space completely. That is, if you take um, R raised to n space, then n vectors will be um, needed. N vectors that are linearly independent will be needed to form a basis. And any n linearly independent vectors uh, can form a basis, provided that uh, they should not be dependent. And our friend uh, earlier today told about the linear independence. And uh, we know that the basis must be able to span the entire vector space. That is the third condition for a basis. That is, if um, using the basis vectors, we should be able to um, span or represent all the vectors in the vector space. So let's see if there is a standard basis in um, um, uh, what we discussed. So, if we consider the R raised to n space, a set of n orthonormal vectors form the standard basis. Set of n orthonormal vectors form the standard basis. And we usually denote it using E1, E2, E3, etc. up to En. And to uh, show that they are vectors, I have used uh, the bold letters. And if we consider the R3 space, that is three dimensional uh, space. Uh, we can uh, say that a set of three orthonormal vectors uh, forms the standard basis, usually represented by E1, E2, E3. And the general representation as far as we are concerned is I, J, K. Uh, this is the standard representation. Now, uh, let us consider the representation of a vector in the standard basis. Let us consider a vector A given by A is equal to A1, E1 plus A2, E2 plus A3, E3. Where A1, A2, uh, this, this, this set, uh, the basis we have considered here is an orthonormal basis. And hence, the components of um, A um, uh, given by A1, A2, e, A3 along the directions of uh, the basis vectors E1, E2, E3 will be nothing but mere projections of our vector along those directions. Uh, so, um, we know that for taking projections, we just uh, have to take the dot product. A1 is equal to A dot E1, A2 is equal to A dot E2, and A3 is equal to A dot E3. And substituting these uh, values in equation 1, we can get A is equal to A dot E1 into E1 plus A dot E2 into E2 plus A dot E3 into E3. Uh, let me just note that down. I need that. As, uh, until now, we have discussed about uh, representing a vector in the standard basis. Let us see if this same vector can be represented using a, another uh, basis. So, we are going to consider a set of three independent orthogonal vectors, but that are not uh, unit vectors. That is, they are not normalized. And I have given the name E1, E2. The set, um, the <coughs> basis set is given by E1, E2, E3. And the, these three vectors can form a basis. And uh, we know that uh, E1, the small letter E1 is the unit vector. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, this uh, new vector that I have defined, I can write the standard basis vectors as E1 is equal to E1 by um, magnitude of E1 and E2 is equal to uh, E2 by magnitude of E2 and just like that E for E3. And we have to sub substitute these values in this equation. We'll get a1 dot E1 by mod E1 into E1 by mod E1. For simplicity, I'm just taking I A. Sigma. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, rearrange it. A dot E1 into E1 by, we have to mod E square, mod EI square, A is equal to. That is, if we take the component, each of the component will be this. That is, um, A dot E1 by mod E1 square. And uh, I am going to represent this component using A1. And similarly, we can derive A2 is equal to A dot E2 by 
mod e2 square and e, a3 is equal to a dot e3 by mod e3 square. <coughs> now, okay, now um, first of all we considered about um, representing a vector a in the standard basis and next we uh, uh, saw how to represent the same vector in a non-standard basis which is, which is orthogonal but not normalized. Now I am going to consider a basis that is neither orthogonal nor normalized and uh, I am taking uh, those set to be E1, E2, E3. These are the basis vectors for the uh, non-orthogonal, non-normalized basis that I am considering uh, right now and comparing equation <coughs> 2 and 6, that would be equation 2 we have a dot e1 is equal to a1, a dot e2 is equal to a2, a dot e3 is equal to a3. And this uh, we have a dot e1 by mod e1 square is equal to a1 and similarly for e2 and e3. And if we compare these two equations, we can see that uh, there is some analogy here. That is instead of this e1, we have got this. So we uh, are going to uh, define <coughs> our new vector and this can this is a vector and hence this must also be a vector as they are analogous so uh, for this value i am going to write e1 is equal to e1 by mod e1 square this is our new basis vector in the um, new basis that we have considered and now we should know what is the reciprocal basis Two bases E1, E2, E3 and E1, E2, E3 are said to be reciprocal if EI dot EJ is equal to chronicle data. That is uh, 1 if I is equal to J and 0 if I not equal to J. This means nothing but the fact that the each vector from one basis will be orthogonal uh, to two vectors from the reciprocal basis. That is if we take in uh, here if I take for I am taking the value 1 and E1 dot uh, I am taking j2, e1 dot e2 will be, what will be the value? It will be 0. That means e1, e1 and e2 will be orthogonal. Similarly, e1 and e3 will be orthogonal. That is, one of the vectors from the original basis and two of the vectors from the uh, uh, different, the second basis that I have considered are orthogonal. And uh, this is a necessary and sufficient condition for uh, two bases for to be reciprocal. And uh, <coughs> I just want to. So, as um, I told, one of the uh, vectors from the reciprocal basis, uh, similarly one of the vectors from the reciprocal basis is orthogonal to two other bases from the original basis. Hence, we can write them in the equation E1 is equal to a constant into E2 cross E3. We all know this relation, that is, uh, this vector belongs to the plane that is perpendicular, uh, uh, belongs to the direction that is perpendicular to the plane containing these two vectors. <clears throat> and now I'm going to take dot product on both sides with E1. E1 dot E1 is equal to the constant again. I'm taking uh, gamma, let's say uh, gamma. And E1 dot E2 cross E3. And just look into the LSS of this equation. This is nothing but the same equation E i dot E j where i is equal to j. Here both i is equal to j is equal to 1. So from the equation we have the value as 1. E dot E dash dot E1 dot E1 is equal to 1. And 1 is equal to gamma into E1 dot E2 cross E3. And if I take 
uh, gamma over that side, 1 by gamma is equal to. Uh, what is this? This is nothing but the Kela triple product. I can represent by using the, just the bracket 1, E2, E3. And by definition of the scalar triple product, we know that scalar triple product is the volume of the parallelopiped that, uh, that is formed by um, these three vectors um, uh, by, by coinciding their origins. So I know that this uh, the RSS of this value is a, uh, this equation is a volume. So I'm going to uh, give the value 1 by gamma is equal to V. And it follows from this equation that E1 was Okay, E1 was a constant into E2 into uh, E2 cross E3 and for that constant I introduced gamma and I have found the value that 1 by gamma is equal to V which uh, therein gives that E1 is equal to V1 by V. For that I am just taking V inverse E2 cross E3 and similarly we can obtain three or more equations. And uh, uh, the derivation is also shown. And thus we can define V as the constant V inverse that I mentioned here or 1 by V that I mentioned here. I can define it as V is equal to E1 dot E2 cross E3. Now, we have seen two types of equations uh, for A, that is uh, actually three types of equations. I first represented A is equal to A1, E1 plus A2, E2 plus A3, E3. And in terms of uh, the next basis I considered, it was A is equal to A1, E1 plus a2, E2 plus A3, E3. And I have also defined a reciprocal basis for the same that was e, E1, E2, E3. And A can also be represented in terms of this reciprocal base, basis as A is equal to A1, E1 plus. Um, uh, because I used this, um, this uh, um, the A as like this in this notation, I am using A here. Let's just forget this equation. A2, E2 plus A3, E3. So we have seen that for the same vector A, there are two sets of components. A1, A2, A3. And uh, another set of components, A1, A2, A3. These are the covariant and contravariant components of A. The components of A in the reciprocal basis is uh, given by the covariant components of A and the components of A in the uh, original basis or the um, direct basis is called as the contravariant components of A. Uh, now we know that there is a reason for calling them so. If we consider uh, the coordinate transformation, these uh, covariant components transfer in the same way that the original basis transforms. Whereas the contravariant components, that is the components of A in the original basis, transforms in the uh, inverse way or opposite way of the how old basis transforms into the new. That is, if a basis transforms into new, uh, if the component transforms the same way as the basis does, it is called as covariant component and that is nothing but the components A in the um, reciprocal basis. And if it transforms uh, inverse to, via inverse transformation that is opposite to the transformation of the basis then we call it as contravariant components that are the components of A in the original basis. Now <coughs> we defined uh, two basis, uh, two types of basis that is a um, um, real um, I mean the direct basis and the reciprocal basis and the space that can be spanned by this direct basis that we defined at first is called as the direct space and the space that can be spanned by the reciprocal basis is called as the reciprocal basis uh, space. And this direct space and the reciprocal space can be related by a Fourier transform. That is the reciprocal space is the Fourier transform of the direct space. And also uh, if we take uh, the reciprocal of the reciprocal uh, space, we get the original direct space. 
and uh, uh, for orthonormal space uh, for the orthonormal space uh, the reciprocal as well as the direct space are the same because we know that uh, let us let us denote e1 e2 and e3 uh, or our conventional notation i j k we know that i is uh, perpendicular to both j and k uh, j is per perpendicular to uh, i and k so we were talking about for orthonormal spaces the direct uh, and the reciprocal space coincide that is if we take e1 e2 and e3 we know that for constructing a reciprocal basis we need two vectors that will be orthogonal to e1 and in our direct spaces basis itself we have those two e2 and e3 and similarly for e2 we need two vectors that will be orthogonal by that definition uh, ah by this definition and we have two vectors orthogonal to e2 in the original basis itself that is e1 and e3 and same is the case with e3 that is a uh, orthonormal basis is uh, a reciprocal basis of itself and hence uh, uh, the reciprocal space and the direct space coincide for an orthonormal basis now i am going to discuss a few applications of our <coughs> reciprocal basis and uh, we have studied about a reciprocal lattice in solid state physics a reciprocal lattice can be used to study crystallography and bragg scattering condition it is formally derived using the concept of reciprocal basis actually and also uh, bragg scattering it occurs only when a reciprocal uh, the scattering vector uh, <coughs> is uh, one of the basis vectors of a reciprocal lattice and uh, uh, the brillouin zone is another application of our reciprocal basis it is uh, uh, mentioned or it is defined using the reciprocal space now the reference thank you for patiently listening to me have a great day